What what would what would cause somebody to do something like that? Well, it's his love, y'all. <laughs> and after he had appeared in human form, he had based and humbled himself still further. He didn't just stop and do it one thing and say, Well, you know what? I, I think I haven't done enough to satisfy anybody. No, he did more. Because it was in his in his heart to do more. And carried his obedience to the extreme of death. Even a death of the cross. Y'all know the story about uh, 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 the Garden of Gethsemane. But Jesus Christ on the night that he was to be crucified. He found himself in that garden. And he had took his 11 remaining disciples from the last supper. Um, that he had con had with them. on um, The Passover supper. And um, he sent Judas Iscariot off to go do what he had told him he needed to do. Which was to go in and... and, 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 and uh, Continue to, to com, I'm sorry to finalize the deal that he had made with the chief priest Caiaphas uh, to to uh, to betray Jesus Christ. So he told him to go take care of that so he can get paid. And then Jesus Christ took the remaining eleven with him and dropped off eight of them and went a little further with what is known as his inner circle. That would be Peter and um, the apostle John and the apostle James, who are known as the sons of Zebedee because their father was named Zebedee. Amen. And he told them, I need y'all to stay here, stay awake, and watch while I go and pray. Because my soul is deeply vexed, I'm deeply depressed about what lays before me. And he went into the garden, the Bible says, and prayed a prayer three times. Father, there be any way to remove this cup from me, um, let it be done. But then he said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. So what was he saying? That was obedience to the cross, y'all, to the devil of the cross. He was saying, you know, uh, um, dad... dad uh, I'm down here in this human form of mine, and in my humanity, I don't want to die. I do not want to die for these people. I know what I agreed to do. I know what I committed myself to do, but I do not want to die for these people. I came to them. They didn't receive me. My own family, including my mother, who you sent a personal angel to uh, announce my coming, she and them tried to take hold of me because they thought I was crazy by doing and saying what I was doing. And not only that, they, they, they denounce the works of mine that come directly from you. And they just don't want to acknowledge you nor me because you and I are one. I don't want to die for one. And oh yeah, that death, oh my, oh my God, that death that's awaiting me. No, no one will ever, ever, ever go through the death that I'm about to go through. I don't want to do it in my humanity. But then the relationship that he shared with his father and the Holy Ghost kicked in on him. And he says, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that's what we need to know about the God that we serve. Amen. Because that's the type of person he is. Amen. Oh, my God. I tell you, we serve an awesome God. And he reigns from heaven above. Amen. Amen. We thank God for that. Now, what I'm going to do right now, I'm going, we're going to get into the word. Because what we're trying to establish here, amen, is that once you come into the relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, something needs to happen with you. And, and this is what should happen according to verse 1. If then you have been raised with Christ to a new life, thus sharing his resurrection from the dead, aim at and seek the rich eternal treasures that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. And I'm going to go to verse 2 as well. And set your minds and keep them set on what is above the higher things, not on the things that are on the earth. Now, if it's referring to me, go to Psalm 110 and 1. I'm going to go there. But I'm also going to come back to another familiar scripture that you all are familiar with. And we're going to get there, Lord, the Messiah. Sit at my right hand until I make your adversaries your footstool. Amen. Amen. That's, that's the significance of what it says here. And when it says that, that where Christ is seated, seated at the right hand of God. God gave Jesus Christ that authority, and he gave it to him after he completed the task at Calvary's cross by dying for us. The Bible says God raised him from the dead. And when he ascended into heaven, he, God gave him all power in heaven and earth and placed it in Jesus Christ's hand, where now he sits on the right hand of the Father, interceding on you and, and my behalf. Now, 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 who wouldn't want to serve a God like that? Now, there's something else that you need to have in accordance to what I read in your hearing from um, verses 1 and 2 in Colossians. Uh, uh, when it says, seek your, seek, uh, what's it? let's see what it says. It says, 
uh, and, and aim at and seek the rich eternal treasures that are above where Christ is. And set your minds and keep them on what is above, the higher things. What is that? Well, it's plain and simple. You've heard this scripture before. Many people heard it, but I don't think they really appropriate it in their lives. Um, let's go to Matthew 6.33. But seek, aim at, and strive, first of all, his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of being right. And then all these things taken together will be given to you besides. King James Version says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. What is God saying? Instead of us trying to go out here and trying to attain the riches of this world, the silver and the gold of this world, God says, don't do that because those things are temporary. They're temporal. They will fade away. But when you seek the kingdom of God first, God will openly reward you in heaven for doing that. And not only that, he will bless you on the earth as long as your heart and mind is right. That's why you got to let that mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. You have to learn how to humble yourself. And when you humble yourself, the God, the God will lift you up and he will. He will. He absolutely will bring you into, uh, 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 oh my God. The, yeah, the, uh, he will supply all of our needs according to the riches and glory that exists within Christ Jesus. God bless you, um, sir. Richard Robert E. Brown, praise God. Thanks for joining us. Amen. All right. Yeah, we're in Colossians, the third chapter, the first through the 17th verse. And the subject is walk in parenthesis, live this way. Amen. Now, now let's see. Let's go. Let's go here, y'all. Verse 3 for, uh, of Colossians. For as far as this world is concerned, you would die. And your new life is hidden with Christ in God. You better believe as far as this new world is concerned that you're died. Matter of fact, we ain't got to even just talk about the world. As far as some of your relatives and your, your, your family members are concerned, if you're in Christ, you're totally dead. And the reason why you're dead to them is because they don't understand. They do, absolutely do not understand that that life that you now live is for Jesus Christ. And you're not living the life that you used to live when you were outside of the will of God. And so therefore, as far as they're concerned, you're dead because they still live in the life. Ah, I recall my God many, many years ago. I was unsaved and I came back out of the military. I went in the military at age 20 years old. I came out in, in uh, December of 76 at the age of 24. When I finally got back home to Buffalo, New York, which was in January of 77, I didn't get to go out right away because I walked smack dab into the blizzard of 77 in Buffalo, New York. But when I was able to go back to my old haunt and my neighborhood, the Commodore Perry Projects, on the south side of the city of Buffalo, New York, there were many, many um, guys that I saw then that knew me when I went into service. And when I came out, they absolutely expected me to be the same way that I was when I went in. Well, I had not, that, that could not have been because first, first off, I had grown in age. Uh, I had gained a little maturity, a little understanding. And oh, I still was doing stuff, but I was not doing what I was doing back four years ago. Uh, uh, that was gone. Why? Because the Bible says this, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Behold, all things old have passed away. All things have become new. That verse is going to come up somewhere again in this, in this message. Because when I was reading the scriptures initially, I saw it at least once or twice that it's going to come up. But I'm going to use it right now because this is what makes me dead um, to some people. And you and I, if you're born again, you're absolutely dead to them. Why? Because you're alive in Christ. And if you're alive in Christ, Jesus Christ said he came to bring division. Among the fa among uh, 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 the household, father will be against son, mm -hmm. mother against daughter, daughter-in-law against mother-in-law, uh, and, and so on and so on in that in that hierarchy of the family. And the reason that he said that that division, y'all, it was simply something nothing more than this. It was a difference of opinion about Jesus Christ. Some were going to come into relationship with him. They were going to join up with him and become disciples. Others were going to refuse to. Therein lies the division. Now, now, where we translated and taking a little bit too far, and this is a sidebar um, that you're getting for free, amen. We've taken that and we've caused the breakup of our families, amen, particularly in the African-American community and in the church. The family is not functioning and, and operating in the manner that it should because we have misinterpreted the word of God. That division did not mean separation. What God is joined together, let no man separate. That's Matthew 19, 6. I'm moving on. 
when Christ was in your life, our life appears, then you also will appear with him in the splendor of his glory. That's why you don't live your life for this life down here on this earth. Because this life that I live, I live it because of Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, the Apostle Paul said it's in him that I live and have my very being. That's right. I'm, I'm, I'm an ambassador for the Lord Jesus Christ. I represent him in all that I do, and I want to do it in a spirit of excellence. So that means I'm going to have to walk a different way. I'm going to have to live a different way. I cannot live that old life that I was living before because it's not representative of Jesus Christ. That's why I'm dead to some people today and are yet still dying to some people. Because don't you know, some of the people that God placed in your pathway that started out on the journey with you or came on to your journey, they will not be able to uh, continue that journey to the end uh, of the journey. Amen. Sometimes some people are there just for a season and nothing more. Yeah. So kill, dead, and deprive the power of power, the evil desire lurking in your members. Now, how do you do that? Those animal impulses and all that is earthly in you that is employed in sin, sexual vice, impurity, sensual uh, appetites, and unholy desires, and all greed and covetedness. For that is idolatry, the deifying of self and other created things instead of God. When you do all that stuff, you're establishing little G.O.D.s. That's what you do. Uh, and, 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 and instead of God. Now, how do we do that, Minister Wettersby? That's hard. You don't know how hard it is just to change. Well, God knows that it's hard to change. But he says there's something that you can do. Because you're used to doing a particular thing. I want to direct you to do something else. And how does he direct us to do it? By his word. So let's go to the word of God. as found in the... Epistle of, 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 of Rome, of, of Rome, the, the epistle to the church at Rome, or better known as Romans, the 12th chapter, and we're going to go at, start at that first verse, and this is what it says, y'all. Apostle Paul, uh, writing to the church at Rome, I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, and beg of you in view of all the mercies of God to make a decisive dedication of your bodies presenting all your members and faculties as a living sacrifice. That's what Jesus did. Holy, devoted, consecrated, and well-pleasing to God, which is your reasonable, rational, intelligent service and spiritual worship. Why? Because that's what God did for us. And he's not asking us to do no more than what he did for us, except he ain't telling us to go to the cross. He just said, present your bodies and all of your faculties as a living sacrifice. That's all he asking. Because you know why? We've done that in 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 the quite in, in the act in the oh my god we've done that in the reverse all our life leading up to Christ because when we are operating in sin we absolutely presented our bodies and our faculties over to sin that's why we were in bondage to sin okay verse two do not be conformed to this world this age fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial custom that would be the easy simplistic way. But that's not what it takes, people. Uh, and, 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 and furthermore, uh, uh, that's a fallacy that a lot of people bring into Christianity. They think that once we come into Christianity salvation, all of a sudden life becomes easy. Everything becomes easy. Oh, no, it doesn't. As a matter of fact, the temperature gets turned up on what we have to deal with and go through a hundred times or more. Why? Because there's a great challenge that's coming for us. First of all, we got two challenges that come up against us. Um, everybody knows about their adversary, the devil, who's walking to and fro on the earth, seeking whom he may devour. We know and recognize and understand that. But there is even a greater adversary than the devil. And guess what? It's the enemy within me. What? Yeah, the enemy within me. That would be me, you. Your flesh, when you look in the mirror, the worst enemy you got is that that stares back at you. Why? Your flesh is accustomed to doing the things that it likes. And it by no shape, form, or fashion is trying to just give that up. It will fight at all in. How do I know that to be so, uh, Minister Weathersby? Well, we're still in the Word. And that's why you got to learn how to walk this way. Let us go. We're still in Romans. Still in Romans. And I'm going to flip back to the 7th chapter of Romans. And I'm going to tell you what we see here. We're going to start at, let's start at verse 14. We know 
that the law is spiritual. But I'm a creature of the flesh, carnal, unspiritual, having been sold.